EV News is back. I know you've all missed it greatly, so here's this week's stories. Grid Service Braintree Electric Forecourt welcomes a fully electric on-demand minibus service. Could this be the future of public transport? Wolverhampton College is set to build an £8.1 million electric vehicle training centre. And Grid Service celebrate the milestone of upgrading their entire motorway charging network. Yes, yes, I know, it has been a very long time, far too long in fact, since I've released any videos, let alone the EV News feature, which I know you all know and love so much. Things have been all over the place with the house move that I planned, been a pretty major change of plan along the way as these things tend to happen, but as you can see, I'm in new surroundings and therefore it's gone partially to plan. You'll probably see a few changes as I get this dog kit set up here, I'm still kind of getting used to how, how I'm set up for filming, but you can agree you'll no longer be able to accuse me of filming in my downstairs toilet, which is a definite improvement. My upload schedule will be a little bit erratic whilst um, things are still ironed out a little bit, but far more regular, which I think you'll agree is the key to getting things back on track. As always, click the like button to convince the algorithm that this channel isn't completely dead, and if you're new here, I'd be very grateful if you'd subscribe as well. Almost at that 5,000 subscribers, please do help me get there. On with the news then. And first up, a story that I thought at first a little bit unexceptional in the face of it, but actually it could be a lot more to it than it seems. Grid Server have announced that a fully electric on-demand minibus service will launch from their Braintree Electric Forecourt and they'll charge there exclusively. Called Digigo, the electric shuttle bus service is a, a set of a huge win for residents that don't have access to a private vehicle have limited access to public transport or have yet to experience the benefits of zero emissions motoring. Not only are these new buses clean, quiet and more comfortable than the equivalent petrol or diesel vehicles, the shuttle service is truly flexible. So how it works is passengers can download the Travel Essex app on their mobile phones uh, and that gives them real-time location information about where the buses are and allows them to specify specific drop-off and collection points within the region. The service trial will run every day from 7am to 10pm, operating in and around Broomfield Hospital, Chelmel Valley Park and Ride, the Great Notley Country Park, the Skyline Business Centre, Braintree Community Hospital and Braintree Rail and Bus Stations. Now, alright, it's, like, it's a little bit boring isn't it, it's just a, it's a minibus service with, with an app and a little bit of difference, but hang on. It sounds like a great thing for residents in those areas, and a, but an even better thing for GridServe because this creates guaranteed custom for the Braintree Electric Forecourt. These buses will definitely need to charge there if this thing's gonna be running all day, every day. Um, but I think it's a little bit more interesting that if you think about it, right? So traditionally, if a council wanted to provide a service like this and they were gonna use electric buses, they'd more than likely need to install a load of dedicated charging infrastructure. If you look at those electric buses in Dundee, if you remember the dedicated rapid chargers that occasionally foolish car drivers might use without thinking about we covered that in a previous news episode. Well this way though, GridServe take care of all that. There's no doubt that the electric forecourts, at least currently, have the spare capacity for this type of thing. They're not, well there is only one at the moment right, there's more, open to, more due to open soon. Uh, but they're not absolutely rammed every day and this type of use could definitely help with some of that, those use some of that capacity, but it could also help justify the existence of electric forecourts in certain areas. And if they're going to make serious money, they'll need to be used for a little bit more than you know people to visit and take photos like we all do at, at the Braintree Electric Forecourt and for holding press launches for new cars. But so this way, GridServe get the custom they need, the constant, predictable custom, and the councils are spared having to pump vast sums of money into infrastructure that would be dedicated for these needs anyway and that they'll struggle to maintain. Everybody's a winner, aren't they? I'd love to know what you think of this in the comments from that point of view. I'm definitely of the opinion that it's far better for councils to use facilities like these electric forecourts than to try and roll their own. I mean, just look at the terrible old charge your car infrastructure that litters council car parks all over the country. It's desperately awaiting councils to actually step up and take charge of the maintenance and nothing's happening as a result. Next up, Education, education, education. It's often said, and I'm sure I've covered news stories about it in the past, that we are facing a huge skill shortage when it comes to EV train mechanics, especially if we see the levels of adoption that we expect as we move towards 2030 and beyond. 
It's a good job then that it's just been announced that Wolverhampton College is set to build an £8.1 million electric vehicle training centre. Plans have been approved for the technical centre at the City of Wolverhampton College's Bilston campus. Once finished, the two-storey Advanced Engineering and Electric Vehicle Centre of Excellence will create hundreds of jobs and teach thousands of students. Construction work is expected to begin this summer as part of the City Council's City Learning Quarter Master Plan. Deputy Leader of the Authority Stephen Simkins said this is another important step towards our vision. It will also offer opportunities to access a new high-end workforce within our city, especially in Bilston. The master plan was launched after the Council secured £7.7 .7 million from the West Midlands Combined Authority, with the Black Country Local Enterprise Partnership providing the remainder of the funds, according to the local Democracy Reporting Service. And this is very good news indeed. There's absolutely no doubt that we must start tra training the next generation of mechanics to be able to work on EVs safely and proficiently as soon as possible. I think we need to get to the point where you cannot train to be a mechanic without at least having a basic level of proficiency in how to work on EVs in a safe manner, even if it's just you know, safe isolation training and that kind of stuff that allows you to do the other jobs that you might need to do on an EV that don't necessarily directly involve the high power components, you just need to be able to work around them safely. So here's hoping that other colleges across the country that offer vehicle engineering type courses will follow suit very quickly. But it's great news from Wolverhampton, I'm really glad to see it. And finally, more news from GridServe. I know it feels a little bit like the GridServe channel sometimes, but I am a huge fan of their work and I'll make no apology for that whatsoever. What they're doing massively impacts the vast majority of EV drivers who will be looking to charge on the motorway at some point. This time, they've announced that they have completed their rollout of upgraded chargers across the motorway network, replacing the legacy electric highway chargers with ones that, shock horror, actually work when you want them to. Just 10 months into ownership of the grid server electric highway, the company has transformed the network, upgraded all of its chargers across the UK's motorways, bringing fast, reliable, connected chargers to the UK's busiest roadside locations. Since June 2021, over 300 medium power electric highway chargers at over 130 motorway service areas run by Extra, Moto, Roadchef, Welcome Break and Westmoreland have been replaced by GridServe and now provide contactless car payment, 24 hour support, real time status updates and much more. Now, a lot of people moan about the progress on the motorway network. Oh, it's not enough. There's not enough chargers. We definitely need more. But I think they forget it's been 10 months. And it's absolutely remarkable progress in that amount of time where we've replaced all the crap old chargers that barely worked with ones that actually stand the chance of actually working when you turn up to them. Unfortunately, they have got busy as a result because people now realise that motorway charging is a viable option and aren't just immediately choosing to divert off the motorway because they know that the chargers are crap and they won't work. There's more to it though, the rollout of their electric hubs at service areas, which gives you ultra rapid charging and lots of it, is also underway. In addition to upgrading the medium power chargers with the latest technology, work continues at pace to drive the motorway high power charging experience to the next level. GridServe has already started to deliver new high power electric hubs, which consist of six or more high power chargers, with three of those new sites operational today and a further nine currently under construction. Swansea, Exeter and Burton and Kendall are done with chargers capable of speeds up to 350 kilowatts and they have transformed charging in these areas. The sites are on major arterial routes in South Wales, South West and North West England where 24 new chargers can deliver up to 100 miles of range in less than 10 minutes, providing you've got a compatible car. This is by no means mission complete for the upgraded medium power charging Rather, GridServe's approach is one of continuous improvement and innovation. As an example, this month also sees the start of the rollout of the dual charging feature on the medium power chargers on the GridServe electric highway. This improvement enables multiple connectors to be used at the same time on a single charger, doubling the number of cars that can charge at once at those locations, providing you can squeeze them into the parking that's available. So yes, dual charging is also coming. It has been a while. I, I told you quite a while ago now that they were going to roll out dual charging but they were waiting on the software update being ready. But it seems that the software issues are finally been ironed out. And we're seeing dual charging rolling out at some locations. I've seen the odd photo being shared in some Facebook groups 
where they'll actually upgrade the signage on the chargers and they'll put a sign on saying this can charge two char cars at a time, which hopefully will clear up some of the confusion around dual charging for people. It, it will, it won't it. If it's got a sign on it saying it will, it will. If it doesn't, it probably won't. The electric forecourt rollout is also progressing with their, new, their second site in Norwich due to open imminently. I'll have some more news about that very shortly, so do watch this space. But that's all we've got time for this time. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know what you think about all of these stories in the comments. Click like if you've made it this far and do subscribe if you haven't already. Join me next time for another EV News episode next week.